In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. It's a big Sunday. Baptisms and a very powerful gospel. This is my beloved son. The sermon's going to be sort of in two parts. The first part is talking about this scripture, but talking about this announcement. And I'd like for you to, it's more of an announcement than a sermon, right, this part, but we're going to change in just a minute. I'd like for you to take this out of your bulletin. And the reason I want to wrap this into the sermon is that uh, some of you know, some of you don't know, but we've really been studying what people need here at St. James through various means, and what you folks said is we want to learn more about the Bible. Fantastic. Fantastic. And so this is what we're doing is beginning today. Um, we're going to use a book that's only cost $6, and it's scholarly, it's succinct. There's a lot that you can learn about the New Testament from this book. We're going to have learning groups, a group of 6 to 12 people with facilitators, a place where we will be able to share the content we have learned and share how to make application of that new information to our lives as we walk go about our daily routines. <coughs> and so we've made opportunities for you folks to sign up. We have 75 of these books. There are roughly 750 people here at St. James, and 75 is one-tenth, and we want at least 75 people to sign up. If you have any questions, I'll be around. But there's a way to sign up on the bulletin board or in here to email me. It's important. It's important. So shift gears. Still talking about scripture. Um, in our prayer book, in our prayer book, there is a, uh, there's a colic about scripture. It's actually a sign for one of the last Sundays of the year. And it was written by Thomas Cranmer. Thomas Cranmer was the first Archbishop of Canterbury. He was the leader of the English Reformation. Um, very famous man, did a lot to shape the Church of England, which was the Anglican approach, and of course, which, of which we are a part. He died in 1556, and this is, this is a piece of that colic that he wrote, that prayer for that day. Blessed Lord, who caused all scripture to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. I think I know a lot of people who have had fun with that phrase, inwardly digest them. I mean, I've heard some clergy, I don't know, Ben, if you've done this, but I've heard some clergy who actually, when they do a, a homily for children, would tear up a piece of paper and say that the Word of God, and put it in their mouths and chew it. I don't know. Have you done that? Paul well, James did. So oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> so it's sort of a funny phrase, but it's an important phrase. It's got a history to it. Jeremiah said, the prophet Jeremiah said, your words were, were found, and I ate them. Is that strange? In the book of Revelation, so I took a little scroll from the angel, and I ate it. What's this about? And then Bede, who was a famous historian in the 8th century, was talking about a monk who was rather holy. And he said, ruminating over God's word like some clean animal chewing the cud. Chewing the cud? Well, let's see. Ruminants, animals that chew the cud are cattle and sheep and Goats and deer. We know about those things out here in Fauquier County. Chewing the cud. But the reason that they used that phrase was, was to try to say something, something basic, something earthy, that would get across the idea that we receive God's word, but it takes a little bit of time you know, to chew 
you that curve. It takes a little bit of time for us to work it, maybe to hear it more than once, maybe to talk with other people about it, maybe to refer to experts. It takes a little time for it to really settle in, settle into our souls <coughs> and really become the nutrient that fully digested food is for these animals who are called ruminants. <coughs> Scriptures, the Word of God, is really important for any of us, wherever we are in our spiritual journey, as we go deeper into that faith in Jesus Christ and into the truth of the Hebrew Bible. Here in the Episcopal Church, we talk about making decisions and deciding on approaches to life based on three things. It's called a three, three-pronged stool, um, and that is scripture, tradition, and reason. And what we say is, when you're going to look at what to do in your life, in your day, when you to look, make decisions about what is right and what is wrong, it's important to see what scripture says, see what tradition says, that's a liturgy, and what, is, what does reason say? And so again, it's saying that we believe it's important to go to scriptures every single time, every single time we face a challenge. In this gospel reading for today, Jesus heard some wonderful words. This is my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And that's in our scripture reading, our scripture gospel reading for today. And they are critical, just critical. They're critical in Jesus' journey, in his faith journey, because after this, after he heard God say, you are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. He was driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness and tempted. A great challenge. I mean, he was empowered by this message of God, but then he was tested. He could have, been, could have endured that test if he hadn't heard those words from God the Father himself. I love you, and I like you. I'm well pleased with you. So he heard those words. He was tested. He survived that test. And do you know the next thing he did? He went to synagogue and read scripture. He went straight to the scriptures and read out of Isaiah. <clears throat> but not only did he read that scripture, basically, about God being present and about doing justice, not only did he read that scripture, but he changed it, he made it his own. This is my point. The scriptures of our faith are at the center of the way we live our lives. And it was at the center, at the center of the way Jesus lived his life. So that makes it even more important for us. In this day and age, we meet, lot of, we meet lots of challenges. And we talk about them all the time because it's true. Um, whether we're talking about the environment, or the economy, or peace and justice, or relationships, there are so many challenges that are facing so many people. It's not just a few, it's facing all of us. And so often we're left in a place of confusion or inaction. And, and that's another reason that we need as people of faith, as Christians, to to know more about how this issue is dealt with in scripture and how that might be applied in a different time, in a modern time, but still how the truth of God is there for us, for right now. One of the ways that we are talking about this here at St. James is that we want to provide a time for people to get good content to get expert opinions, subject, objective information about scripture, but also time to talk with each other. Because as Jesus said, love one another, we learn about our faith from people who know a lot about our faith, but also simply from each other, be in a place where we can share our thoughts and be inspired by each other. And we also learn about this through praying about those words of God. 
Here's what I'm trying to say. We have said here at St. James, wherever we are in our journey, we want to learn more about the Bible. We want to incorporate more into our lives. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. One of the jokes in the Episcopal Church, which I've been a part of, uh, that is this joke, and I bet some of you have said it too, is that, uh, you know, when we talk about Scripture, we'll say, well, let me see. I'm an Episcopalian. I don't know much about, about the Bible. I mean, you know, have you ever heard that in the Episcopal Church? I don't know why we keep joking about that, because I don't think it's funny anymore. I really don't. <clears throat> I think that we, with good minds and good hearts and good commitments to our journeys in faith, it's time for us, if we need to know more, and I bet we do, I certainly do, let's learn more about how God's Word is for us in this day, as well as in the present, and how it can be really alive for us. So I've got another puppy story. <laughs> For you who don't know, I've had, we have six puppies and uh, labs, and uh, five of them are gone to good families, but we've got one, Colleen, she's black lab. Um, I love that little dog. And I'm on, I'm on morning duty, I'm on morning duty. So when she gets up and uh, wakes up about 6.30, take her out and she does her business and comes back in and plays a little bit with her mother, with her mother and by herself. Gets fed at 7 o'clock, goes out some more exercise, come in, lays inside. And sooner or later, sooner or later, she wants to climb up into my lap, which is fine with me. And so she'll come to my knees and sort of want and I'll pick her up and put her in my lap. And she sort of cuddles a little bit and sort of gets comfortable and puts her head right there and maybe turns and and, and, and licks my face. I don't lick her face, but she licks my face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I think she does that. I think she does that because she trusts me. I think she does that because uh, she feels loved. I think she does that because she knows I provide food for her. I think she does that because she just feels comfortable and safe. And she sleeps for a few seconds. Oh, not a few seconds, a few minutes. And then I pick her up and put her in the crate for her nap. Here's the interesting thing. Guess how I felt when that little puppy was right up next to my neck? I felt loved. And I felt safe. And I felt trusted by that little puppy. And I felt happy about myself and ready to live my life as best I could. Isn't it? Isn't that amazing? I mean, the puppy felt loved, and I felt loved, and we were willing to go ahead and take care of business. Here's something I realized. That's not a bad image for moving deeper, diving deeper into God's Word, or getting closer to God. That's not a bad image for being in the Word through prayer. Because I think when we really go deeper, we feel loved by that God's Word. We, we know more about who God is and we can, we can just get connected better. We trust God the more we know about God. We, we feel safe God, about God. We, we maybe even feel like um, we're okay. And here's my thought for this morning. How do you think God feels when we feel safe? <coughs> wrapped in the arms of God. I think God feels loved by us when we choose to spend that much time, new time and fresh time with God in prayer or with scripture. I think God feels loved and trusted. What a wonderful time we humans and God can have together to mutually affirm it. Not that God needs our affirmation, but God loves to hear our affirmation. God, you are good. And the next step is exactly what Jesus did after this reading in the Gospel. He was tempted, but went to the, to the synagogue to take that scripture of the Jew, Jewish faith 
and put a different spin on it, which meant more, more about Jesus. I mean, he was saying in that moment, I am going to believe the scriptures and I want to take it a step farther. And we can do the same. In studying and moving deeper into the scriptures, not only will we feel God's love and trust and joy, but we will be empowered to make a difference. We will be, we will be strengthened and we will be informed to do our part in bringing justice into the world, which is exactly what Jesus wants us to do. Sometime today, may you be still and listen to those words from God to you. You are beloved, and with you, I am well pleased. 